Thank you for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. If you check the description box below, it'll have a list of all the supplies I used for this painting. I'm using an ampersand gesso board panel. It's a 12 by 12 inch. I've coated it with a layer of the medium gray from Liquitex. And then I went in with Sorel transfer paper and transferred on my image. I'm beginning to start on the background now. And I'm using some warmer tones, some burnt sienna, a little bit of red oxide, and some burnt umber and titanium white. I'm just varying the values. And in certain areas, as the trees kind of go down a little bit farther, more towards the ground, I start adding in more of my blues. Now the three blues that I'm using are the phalo blue, the Prussian blue, and the cobalt blue. And I just kind of intermix all of them. I use more of the phalo blue throughout this painting, um, but I do incorporate all the other blues as well. And I'm really just looking at my reference photo and just kind of decide where I want to have all of these variations of colors. And the brush that you're using that you want to be using is kind of a an, maybe an older brush that you might have. Um, I'm using a flat bristle brush. You don't have to. You can use like a filbert or even a round to create these effects. But the fact that it is an old brush is going to be beneficial in creating a little bit more of a fuzzy look and it creates more distance in the background. We do want to keep this in the background so we don't want any harsh um, lines, nothing too distinct. Uh, it, it does look kind of a mess until it all builds together. So really I'm just looking to put in different tones throughout the painting and I'm not shifting my values too much. So I'm not using my darkest darks um, in the background or my lightest lights. The only part that has some of the lightest light is you'll see um, the light area that comes down between the trees. You'll see that in a minute. But I just, I'm using sporadic brush strokes, just trying to keep it really loose. Um, nothing too structured. And I'm really just looking at my reference photo and looking at kind of the blocks of color that I see. And I'm mixing up the blues um, pretty frequently. That way everything doesn't become too monotone. It doesn't all become the same kind of tone. I want to make sure that there's some diversity in the background. You can see that having that gray background that I had down um, ended up being a, a perfect tone for this painting. That way, it, adding a layer of the background first, just one solid color, um, especially a neutral tone like a gray, allows you to just focus on putting color blocks everywhere and not trying to focus on getting the white of the canvas covered. So this gray, I, I was trying to decipher whether I wanted to use a burnt sienna as the background or the gray, and I'm glad I chose the gray. Um, I think that the burnt sienna would have fought a little bit too much with the blue, and you wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten those uh, more vibrant blue colors. So I, I highly recommend coating your canvas in a neutral gray. If you don't have um, the actual neutral gray, you can just mix the, um, an ivory black with titanium white until you get a light gray mixture. So now I'm filling in around the lantern. I'm just trying to fill in all of the negative space that I see around the lantern. Um, you'll see I end up going back into it and adding a little bit more and cleaning up the edges a little bit more. Even for the tree trunks, I'm making sure that I'm not making them really straight, hard lines. I'm I'm using kind of a sporadic uh, brush stroke and just kind of rubbing it up and down and creating softer edges that way. And then I can go in and adjust the values a little bit here and there, but I don't want any major, uh, major value shifts in the background. And I'm still using that roughed up uh, flat brush for most of this, and then I'll switch to some other brushes in a few minutes. And again, I'm going back in and kind of softening some edges that maybe seem a little bit too harsh. And you can see as I kind of blur that out, it pushes, it pushes um, like the tree trunks and the branches back just a little bit. And that's exactly what we want. 
So here I'm going in with some titanium white and a little bit of the Naples yellow, just enough to shift the color a little. And right now for this first layer, I'm just looking to start covering up some of that gray that's back there. Um, I'm not gonna get the brilliance that I want with just one layer of the titanium white, so I need to let that sit. And this is when I move on to the branch while that kind of dries. So for this red area, I'm using just pure red oxide and I'm looking at my reference and uh, deciding exactly where I want more of the red oxide pronounced. And then I go in with my deeper shadow values, which is um, diox purple and burnt umber. And then I just go ahead and fill in all of those with just some, um, I use more vertical strokes and then I use some horizontal strokes. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to give it a little bit of texture, nothing real defined. Um, the main focus in this painting is the lantern. So I'm not looking for any really hard edges on the branch either. And then I decided that I wanted to add a little bit more warmth down to the bottom, so I brought down some of the warmer tones of the trees, um, extended that past the bottom of the branch. And this is the point where I go in with the same color, the titanium white and a little bit of the Naples yellow, and I'm just putting in some of the light area, doing another coat, and I use my finger and kind of um, gently soften some of the edges around the trees. I want those to kind of start to disappear with the background. I don't want any harsh edges on the um, from where the light is coming through and the edge of the tree. And in a few minutes I'll go ahead and adjust my screen settings and you'll be able to see the colors more clearly. Uh, I did get a little washed out and I didn't notice it in time while I was filming so um, when I was editing, I went ahead and adjusted that so that you can get a more accurate representation. And this light background area, this takes a few coats, sometimes maybe two or three. I think I did three, maybe four coats um, of the Naples yellow and titanium white just to get a nice coverage. And I wanted to make sure I got that vibrancy. Um, that was coming through the trees in that area. And now I'm going in with a little bit of the burnt sienna red oxide and titanium white. And I'm adding in, these are supposed to be snowflakes that are kind of sunlit. So I'm taking some of the warmer tones and I'm adding in a little bit of um, circular motions, which is creating kind of a fuzzy, almost like a bouquet um, background but these are really snowflakes and you'll see I add in some in the same way with uh, the blues that I use. And then I go through and just add in a little bit of a, a lighter color, uh, titanium white with a little bit of the cobalt blue, little specks of that, just varying it. I wanna make sure I bring down some of that warmth that was just at the top. I wanna incorporate through the rest of the painting. So that's why I chose to use some of the warmer tones for the snowflakes. And then you'll see in a minute, I, do, I want even smaller dots and more sporadic dots. So I use a fan brush watered down with um, some water and my paint mixture, which I believe was titanium white and cobalt blue, maybe a little bit of phthalo blue in that, uh, primarily titanium white though. And then I lay that over top of the canvas and hit it with another brush and it creates a splatter onto the canvas. So I believe this is my fourth layer going on um, with that bright area. It does take, like I said, a few areas or a few times to really get that vibrancy. And 
And then once I'm happy with the background, then I'm moving on to the snow and I'm using a mixture of the phalo blue, um, titanium white, and mainly titanium white, just very little of the phalo blue and a little bit of the Mars black just to tone down the vibrancy a little bit. And I'm still using that, um, it's a flat brush that's spray, kind of uh, roughed up on the edges and I'm, that created perfect texture for snow. So as I work towards the top of the snow on the branch, then I start adding in, um, I, I create a separate mixture. I don't want to add it to my pile of the shadow tone for the snow. So I'm using titanium white and Naples yellow and just trying to intermingle that with some of the shadow area on the snow. And like I said, I'll adjust my settings in a minute in the video and you'll be able to see more of the color variations. And at this point, I knew I was gonna be working on the snow and the branch and I didn't want to lose um, the drawing that I had of the handle there. So I went ahead and blocked that in. And this is where I'm just adding a little bit more detail with a nice fine round brush. Um, I'm adding in a little bit of detail to the branches and kind of creating some of the shadow areas, redefining the shape of the branch. Now I'm going in and doing the same thing with the dark areas and then I'll do it with the light areas. And just kind of popping out some of the areas that I want to catch a little bit more light. And I'm moving on to the icicles now. I'm using a mixture of titanium white, mainly titanium white with a little bit of Naples yellow. And I'm almost outlining it, but I'm using sporadic, uh, like a sporadic dotting method so that some areas catch a little bit more of the lightness than others. That gives it a little bit more of a natural um, feel to it. And you'll see I go over this, the icicles, a few times just to get the brightness that I want. Because it is a gray background, pretty much the first layer is just to cover up the gray. And then your second and third layer is uh, getting that vibrancy from the light color. And something to remember about acrylics is that they generally do dry one to sh two shades darker. Um, so this, as the video progresses, it gets just a little bit darker. And that's just the nature of acrylics. Once I get all the light areas blocked in, I go in with a liner brush and start adding in some of the branches. Now the trick with like a liner brush or even a fine tipped uh, uh, round brush, you wanna add some water to your paint and to your brush, almost to where it's an ink consistency, but it is not uh, dripping off of your canvas. That allows for finer lines and a little bit E more ease and control of where the paint is going to go. And to some of the icicles, I went ahead and added in a little bit of burnt sienna to that titanium white and Naples yellow mixture, just to warm it up a little bit. And then again, I'm adding, um, this is pure titanium white and I'm adding that in just really select areas. I want to keep some areas a little bit um, lighter but darker than my brightest light. And then before I start working on the lantern, I want to make sure all of my edges 
um, are cleaned up and I've got all of my negative space around the lantern filled in. So I'm just taking some of my background colors and just making sure I bring those colors all the way up to the lantern's edge. Once I get that complete, then I move on to the lantern and I'm using a mixture of burnt umber and dioxazine purple. And right now I'm filling in some of the dark areas on the lantern. This is not the darkest dark. I do come in with some Mars black and use that sparingly and apply that to some of the darker areas. So at this point, I'm really just paying attention to my reference photo, looking for where I see some of the darkest darks. Um, because I have it transferred onto the canvas already, it makes it really easy uh, during the painting process. Uh, it's almost like a paint by, by numbers where you're just kind of filling in where, where you see the color. It's already drawn out for you. And as I'm applying this darker color, I'm trying not to make very um, hard, distinct edges yet. So you'll see I kind of run my brush back and forth, almost like a scumbling motion um, on the canvas. Because this is like a rusted metal, uh, I do want to have some kind of texture there. So I'm not looking for any um, really harsh lines just yet. And the areas that I plan on putting the snow, I'm leaving leaving those out. And then the even the areas that I'm planning on being lit by the lantern, like the two side arms, and a little bit of some of the areas towards the front of the uh, lantern, I am leaving that gray color so that I can just come in with my reddish tones and I won't have an issue covering over anything. If I were to put the dark down, and try to cover over with um, like a red oxide or um, a burnt sienna, it won't cover as well. So I would actually have to go in with a white and um, in order to get any kind of vibrancy from it. And now I am kind of just touching up some areas that I still missed once I got all of the dark put in. I realized there was still some areas that needed coverage with some of the background color. So this is the point when I'm bringing in my darkest value and that is Mars Black. And you can see I'm just using it very sparingly. But you can see the, the depth that it gives and the dimension that it gives to the um, lantern when you've got those even just those two shades, the medium dark color and the black. It makes a big difference, but I use it very sparingly. So this is when I'm coming in with some red oxide. I do believe I have a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in with that. You can also um, add in a little bit of burnt umber to tone it down just a little. And then I kind of switch back and forth trying to merge those two colors so I'll add a little bit more um, burnt umber to my red oxide mix and that helps to merge some of those light areas with the dark areas. And this is some red oxide with some cadmium red um, light. That's the mixture that I'm using for this. I wanted a real vibrant kind of color in that area. And then I'm adding in a little cad yellow to that as well. 
I do end up uh, going over it with some white because it wasn't getting the um, vibrancy that I wanted. Because I did have the gray background down, I needed to cover that up first. Um, and I really wanted it to be vibrant in particular areas. So I did go in with some white and then let that dry and then glazed over the top with some of the lighter yellow um, reddish tones. Now I'm reestablishing some of my darks um, with acrylics. It's all about layering. Uh, it, it's when I put the dark on first, like I said, it's mainly covering the background. So whether that's a white canvas or whether that is um, this neutral gray that I have down, then the second layer on top of that is where you're gonna where your depth is really gonna start coming in. So you can see I go over some areas um, multiple times that's just the nature of acrylics. You can't uh, get coverage in just one sweep. Um, you could, but it won't, you won't get the same result. So here I'm coming with some of the titanium white. I believe this has a little bit of cad yellow in it, uh, just a very tiny bit. And I'm trying to get some of the highlights that I want in there. So I'm preparing ahead because I want it to be very vibrant. I'm laying this uh, white down so that I can bring up the value and then I can just tone the value with the color that I want. And on this lantern, the glass portion um, where the flame is, was actually kind of frosted over. So this is more of like a peachier tone that I'm applying now. Like I said, um, sometimes I got to repeat it a few times, but it's it, it really is the first layer is just covering that gray. So you'll see me go over some areas multiple times. Again, it's just creating the right vibrancy um, or depth. And I believe in a minute is when you'll see me, there we go, it's switched. Um, this is the true color uh, that I was seeing in person. So I switched the, uh, or I edited the, um, the vibrancy on the painting so that you could accurately see some of the colors that I was painting. Um, this camera, for some reason, wants to wash everything out. Uh, so hopefully this helps and you can see a little bit more of the true colors and um, everything doesn't look just white and there is some warmth to some areas. So these are just distant branches in the background. I didn't want to bring too much attention to them. Uh, you can even leave them out if you felt that they were distracting. I did contemplate that, but I ultimately just ended up putting them on. Um, and I'm pretty much using the same thing that I did with the icicles. A lot of the same colors. Um, they are snow covered, so I didn't want to um, bring them too bright either. I wanted to make sure I had some of the background color in some of the snow just so that they could... They could, they could be there, but kind of vanish into the background a little bit more. So now I'm using the same technique that I used on the snow on the branch, and I'm applying the snow to the lantern. Now my camera settings, I adjusted them, but they do tend to wash out everything and make um, light areas look white. This isn't actually white, it's titanium white, 
um, with a little bit of cobalt blue or phthalo blue and a little bit of Mars black just to bring it to a more blue gray tone. And I'm applying this mainly in the shadow areas of the snow. And on the lighter side is when I'll use my titanium white Naples yellow mixture. You can also, if you want a little bit more warmth in that or a little bit more of a difference between the snow in the um, branch and the snow on the lantern, you can add a little bit of burnt sienna to that. For some of the smaller snow areas, I'm using a small round brush and just kind of tapping, um, just dabbing it on there to give it a little bit of texture, softening some of the edges. The main goal is to make it look fluffy and how you get that is by almost like a dabbing, um, dotting texture. Now I'm adding in another layer, some different tones to the lantern glass area. I wanted some warmer tones, so I added in some Cad Red Light to Naples Yellow and Titanium White mixture. And some areas have um, more of the Cad Red and less of the white. Now I'm adding a little bit of warmth to the snow area with some of the same colors that I'm using on the glass of the lantern. Um, snow is reflective, so it is going to pick up some of that warmth from the fire inside the lantern. So I wanna make sure I um, suggest some of that on the snow. I'm just adding in a few lines that I see on my reference photo, um, just giving it the illusion that you can see through the glass to the back side of the lantern. Um, just those little details do make a difference. And then I wanted to take some of the um, orange or orangey tones that I have in the lantern and apply that to some of the wire that goes across the glass um, just to lighten up and not make those lines too distinct. I wanted to add a little bit of warmth to those. And this is the point where I just kind of pop around the painting and um, 
add any little tone shifts that I want to do. You're not really changing the structure at this point in the painting. Um, this is really just for um, tone shifts or slight value shifts. So I'm just hopping around adding highlights where I think um, some areas need to be lighter, uh, mainly to the snow. And the icicles, again, just adding a little bit more brightness to some of those areas. This is kind of the final stage of the painting where you can adjust all the little details, start adding in... Um, some different tones, warmer tones. It's really when you kind of step back from the painting and look and see what would make it um, better and more pleasing to the eye. And down below in the description box, I will have a link to the um, Facebook page where you can get this traceable. And I'll also post um, a picture of the finished painting so that you can use that as a reference. If there's something that you would like to see me paint, go ahead and put it in the comments below and I will try and create something with that. And with the uh, Facebook page, feel free to post there as well any of your finished tutorials that you've done from me um, or if there's work that you're working on that you need um, advice for, I'd be happy to help and I'm sure some of the other members would as well. And I wanted this area that I'm working on on the branch to be a little bit brighter, so I did the same technique where I added white to it, let that dry, and then I can glaze over it with um, the red oxide and it will be a little bit brighter, more vibrant.
and I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and feel free to like and subscribe and leave a comment below and let me know how you liked it. Thank you so much and have a great day.